Good morning and welcome to St. John the Baptist. Before we begin our celebration of Mass, please, as always, take a moment to silence or turn off all cell phones. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hand. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. 
Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him, and through him, and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. The keys to the kingdom of God were entrusted to a man from our Savior himself. And those keys we know and believe and celebrate as Catholics is a representation of real authority. Not just symbolic, not just a title, but real authority to bind and loose here on, in, on earth and so it is also in heaven. So we celebrate this beautiful Sunday reflecting upon this beautiful gift, the real authority that is exercised in and only in the Catholic Church. We know that our belief in this particular gospel passage differentiates us from our separated brethren and the other Christian churches. Because in this passage we find the foundation for the role of the Pope in the papacy and the foundation for what we believe in as papal infallibility that is, in regard to faith and morals, those things which are essential to leading us to salvation, the Catholic Church, in her highest authority, cannot err, cannot be in error in teaching definitively these truths which we hold and which guide our lives. And this is something that gives us great confidence. And I'm sure it was true also for the early church. Those who knew St. Peter and knew him to be a man who was by no means perfect, the Gospels indeed show us, in certain ways, the flaws and weaknesses, not only of St. Peter, but in fact of all the other apostles. But the Lord entrusted to him this real authority so that people can be certain about what to believe and how those beliefs form our lives, guide our choices, indicate to us right from wrong, good from evil, truth from error. And this is why, as Catholics, we celebrate this reality as a source of great confidence and trust in God the Father continuing to provide for his church and through the church to the entire world 
the saving truth revealed in Jesus Christ. This is the truth that we believe. It is the truth that we live. It is the truth that is, in fact, celebrated at every Mass, every time we pray, this beautiful truth that God is continuing to guide us through His Church. Now, our response to the real authority that was entrusted to St. Peter is, we know, loving obedience. Even though that's hard sometimes as children, that first act of loving obedience is directed towards our good parents. And from that experience, we learn that there are other people who exercise real authority in our lives. And for us to really experience the confidence and trust that comes from following that guidance, we must believe that our proper response is always obedience in love and gratitude and appreciation. And that certainly is something that we all experience as Catholics, following faithfully the teachings of the church, the guidance that God himself provides in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit in the church's teachings. And it's a cause not only for the peace that we have personally in our lives when we lovingly submit and obey to that authority, but especially when we share that good news by the goodness of our lives. Church is constantly sharing this good news. We know the truth that has been revealed. We know that the church throughout our 2,000 year history has constantly offered to the world this good news, the gospel. And we know that in our times, as is always the case, but certainly in our times, we are now the ones who are to believe in the good news and to live that good news and proclaim it throughout our lives in every way. And there are, of course, although there are many, many difficulties and a lot of bad news in the world today, there is so much good news. And I just want to share with you a couple of items of good news beyond just the gospel and the real authority that Jesus entrusted to St. Peter. Yesterday morning, I was at our abbey, St. Michael's Abbey, and here's the good news. Yesterday, the community ordained two new deacons for the community. So it was a great cause for celebration, and these two new deacons will be ordained priests, you know, in June, probably, next spring. They'll, in fact, be the first two young men to be ordained priests in the new abbey. Construction is on schedule. We are set to move in sometime in January, early 2021. So it was a really beautiful experience. And in addition to the two new deacons that we have, more good news from the Abbey. This Thursday, the Feast of St. Monica, August 27th, the Abbey will welcome seven new seminarians, seven new postulants entering later this week. So by God's grace, we are being blessed. We are continuing to grow. So there are many, many reasons for us to celebrate that good news. Yesterday, during the ordination ceremony for our two new deacons, it's a beautiful, well, there are many beautiful prayers in the ceremony. And for all of us who were ordained deacons and then, of course, priests, it's always an opportunity for us to remember and to reflect on our ordination day. For me, it was 24 years ago I was ordained a deacon. And it's a beautiful phrase that I just want to share with you because it applies to all of us. And in particular, it's also an expression of how we can understand rightly and live the message of today's gospel. The keys of the kingdom of God were entrusted to the church in the person of St. Peter. And that authority continues to guide our lives. There's a beautiful point in the ordination ceremony. After the bishop does what we refer to as the interrogation of the candidates. Are you so resolved to you know, live the Christian life? Are you so resolved to preach and teach the gospel in all its fidelity? Are you so, yes, I do, I do, I do with the help of God. Then there's a beautiful phrase before the actual prayer of consecration. When the bishop exhorts those to be ordained to say this, you will be, again paraphrasing, you will be ministers of God's word, and you are ordained to preach that word. And then here's the phrase, and I hope I get it right. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Again, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Very, very powerful words that apply not only to those ordained deacons, but to all of us, each in our own way. That's the, the commission to all Catholics. Believe what you read in the Word of God and in the teachings of the church. Believe it with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength because it's true. God has revealed these things. The church teaches these things to safely guide us with certainty to the truth that saves us and transforms the world. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe. All of us are each in our own way teachers. Obviously parents, 
First and foremost, teachers are their children. Some of you may in fact be teachers. I know that to be true. Priests, all of us, teaching not only by our words but by our example. Teach what you believe. And finally, in the lived reality of your daily life, practice what you teach. Because words, in fact, have very little effect when there is not the authenticity of the lived reality of one's life to back up, to support one's words. Words are one thing. Actions, indeed, speak much louder. So again, that beautiful phrase just struck me yesterday morning as I was praying for our two young men. And again, it's such a beautiful reminder of what we should be reflecting upon each and every day of our lives as we grow in our spiritual life. This, of course, reflects upon the way in which today's second reading reminds us, yes, that we are to submit to these teachings, these things that are unsearchable, the ways of God. He is indeed, you know, for him, through him, all things exist. To him be glory forever. And our lives need to express that reality in the courageous witness of our faith. So may we give thanks to God for the beautiful reminder and the message of our gospel today that we are happily under the real authority that God has entrusted to his true church in this world. And for all the difficulties and challenges, let us be confident and trusting in that guidance. And may we take those beautiful words to heart. May we be familiar, more familiar each and every day with the word of God. And my dear brothers and sisters, truly, Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and above all, practice what you teach. Please stand and let us together now make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the Holy Church, built on the rock of St. Peter the Apostle, let us now bring our prayers of petition to our loving God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may they bring the faithful to a deeper knowledge of our faith and the love of God through their ministry of preaching and teaching. We pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, may they exercise their authority in ways that show respect for the laws of God. We pray to the Lord. For God's mercy upon all those who are enslaved by error and sin, may the truth of the gospel and the teachings of the church bring them forgiveness and freedom, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick and suffering, especially Francis McAuliffe, Olga Rifat, Michael Sweet, Shay Shaibani, Maureen Brown, Yvonne Dunn, Jean Levan, and Robert Ingram, May they be blessed with healing and strength in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. For all our loved ones who have died, especially Ted Orr, Fernando Dizon, and Jesus Ledesma Paramo, may they be welcomed into the joy and peace of eternal life with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions submitted to our St. John's Prayer Line Ministries, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts, 
we pray to the Lord. We pray especially today for the repose of the soul of Ethan James Francois, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, we humbly ask you to hear these prayers. Continue to keep us faithful to the teachings of Christ so that we may one day rejoice in the resurrection of all God's holy ones. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. So one announcement, which is more good news, that is the evening confessions here at the parish will resume this week, so three nights a week, not the usual four. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, 7.30 p.m., the line will be here in the courtyard, in the shade and with the breeze. The priest will be here at this back door. Okay, so again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., evening confessions resuming starting tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.